All right. Good morning, Dallas. I'm just kidding. Good morning from wherever you're at in the world, or good evening, or good afternoon. This is Luis Ryan Diaz from the Podcast Domination Show, and I promise I'm not going to talk this obnoxiously on the actual interview, because today I have a beast of a podcaster, a beast of a influencer, and just an all-around awesome human by the name of Marcus Watts. You can find him over at Instagram at the Watts. That's with two T's. Guy, the Watts guy. And Marcus is a specimen, <laughs> should I say, on his own. And then we dive into, um, you'll see on this interview, a lot of his his uh, expertise in other areas. And it's just like, holy cow. But to give you guys a little background on Marcus, he was a former pro athlete. He's also a army veteran. Um, so shout out to him for serving our country. And, you know, Marcus, I'll give you guys some, some more background. He's 6'8", 240. He's a big dude, but he's not, he's impressive because he was a pro athlete. He was a pro, pro uh, basketball player. However, that's not even the best part. The best part is that the guy is an amazing podcaster. He has two podcasts, one that's just released called The Success Bias and the other one called The Vegan Transition. And by the way, he's vegan also. You can, so you can check that out on his Instagram too. But in this episode, we dive into some of his really, really amazing guerrilla marketing tactics. And he shows and shares with us the way he grew his gym business literally from nothing up into two locations using these guerrilla marketing tactics. And he also shares with us how he gets in touch with high level influencers through a multi step sequence of, um, Instagram and other social media platforms that he ties together to get their attention. So it's really interesting. That part alone will pay for the price of admission for this podcast. And we get into some new areas. I mean, we were actually at one point talking about we should charge for this episode. It was so damn good. Um, we talk a lot about SoundCloud, Spotify strategies that most, pretty much no one is leveraging right now. And basically how to dominate using some of their technology uh, for free. So I hope you enjoy it. Be sure to check out The Vegan Transition and The Success Bias. And oh, don't forget, he gave us an amazing gift. Uh, it's a lot of gifts, actually. It's more than one. It's over at Uprise. So get ready for this. It's, it's UP, like up, obviously. And then R as in Ryan, Y as in yellow, Z as in zebra, digital. Uprise, digital.com forward slash free. And that'll be in the show notes for all my friends who are driving or cannot spell or would rather not type that in. So that's it for today. Um, but yeah, enjoy this episode with Marcus Watts. Check out Uprise, R-Y-Z-E, digital.com forward slash free for more stuff, free stuff for Marcus. And enjoy, and I'll catch you later. Hey, welcome to the podcast Domination Show, where we help you launch, grow, monetize, and dominate the podcasting space. This is a show where we believe that if you can get attention with your podcast, you can influence someone. And if you can influence someone, you can get them to take massive action. And if you can get someone to do that, you, my friend, can dominate. I'm Luis Diaz, your host and founder of Podcast Domination, and I'm your guide. Let's go. It is all good. So, Marcus, I think it's been probably about a week since we talked on yeah, yeah. the last time we had a, a good connection. Dude, man, it was, it was fun. We talked about a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah, we did. One of them being the identity change people have to go through sometimes when you transition from one area to another. However, we probably will talk about that, but I know we spent a good deal of time on that last time. So I really want to kind of focus in on what you just told me kind of before we got recording officially about what you're doing right now in the digital space. I know you help people, mainly business owners and creators with digital strategy. I know initially you came up as a fitness guy, as a pro athlete. Um, we didn't get into your pro athlete background in the yeah. first, in the first uh, episode. However, I seen yourself on Instagram. <laughs> I was like, damn, he's yeah. hooping. <laughs> so um, you vegan also, you, you do a lot of cool things. You wear a lot of cool hats, but today I want to focus in on the podcasters because I know you are highly talented as a one, a creator, and then two, a guy in the back end who can help people grow and scale a podcast. Um, 
So yeah, let's kick it off. Let's kind of kick it off on how you went from athlete to, to like a guy who has two podcasts, one coming out very soon called the success bias and another one called the vegan transition. Um, if you can kind of take us through that journey. Let's, um, yeah, dive yeah, in there. Sure, man. So just, a, you know, a brief synopsis on my athletic career. I was an army brat and moved all over the world. Um, graduated from high school in Alaska, actually with Mario Chalmers, shout out Mario Chalmers, who won a championship, few championships with the Miami heat. Yeah. Um, now, he's, <laughs> now he's in Euro league doing his thing. And I'm, I know he just popped up in the big three since he's probably since he's back for the summer. <laughs> but then I went on to, um, uh, played Division One basketball at McNeese State University. From there, I transferred to Florida Gulf Coast University, and then I went overseas. Played overseas for about six seasons all over the world, and um, always had a passion of using the fitness stuff to launch the next phase of my life. So before mm-hmm. basketball was done with me, I said deuces. You know what I'm saying? At 27 years old, it was either going to be if I play till I'm 30, if I go back and play next season, I'll play till I'm 30. If I play till I'm 30, I'll play till I'm 35. Because look, bro, the money is going to be there. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And don't get me wrong. It's a fun life to live, but I didn't want to be away from, you know, family for eight, 10 months at a time. And I wanted the opportunity to start building on what was going to be. And this is a, you know, the mindset of this is I wanted, I already was trying to start building on what was going to be happening in the second phase of my life. You know I what see. I'm saying? Yeah. And I knew yeah. I needed to build those skills. So set a plan, wrote some goals down on a sheet. Um, yeah. I accomplished my five-year goals in about like a year and a half, two years, opened my first gym in 2013 onto my second gym in, t- in 2016. And the whole time I'm using a lot of like guerrilla marketing and I'm having to learn these things. So when you talk about wearing these hats, it's because I was forced to, we didn't have the budget to go hire a team right. in 2013, even 2000, you know, 15, 16, it just, the information wasn't as out there. It was very closed off. Um, yeah. you were going to have to, you were going to, you were getting fucking taxed. You know what I'm saying? If you're hiring somebody out for it. So yeah. not having that luxury forced me to, to kind of learn a lot of these things. And I recognized very, very fast the power of social media when we didn't even have an actual gym location for my first gym, right? This is, mm-hmm. we hadn't even signed our lease yet. And I already started using some tactics on Facebook and Instagram. So this is back when you had to go follow everybody. <laughs> hand and like, Those it's like, yeah. yeah. So like, I was like, I basically set up a, a plan where I followed everybody within a five mile radius that followed anything fitness, like college universities, weightlifting teams, you name it, yoga, anything. Yeah. And I started interacting with their accounts. Then I started, we basically just put like, Hey, that we're in Fort Myers, which is the major city and no image. And I started posting motivational quotes and free workouts and images of equipment that I knew that we were buying. Yeah. And people started paying attention. And on our Facebook page, I started posting free workouts and doing, well, long story short, when we signed our lease and I dropped that we were in this city mm-hmm. and at this exact spot, phones were just blowing off the hook. And within our first <laughs> month, we had over a hundred members and that was our goal. So that's kind of where it came from. And man, really just running gyms, working with people, managing teams, trying to grow my own personal brand. I just dove into so many amazing people's content that I started creating a flow for myself. And one day, somebody from a nutrition company wanted to leverage my gym. Uh, We had a very, very big following. And uh, they needed some work done. And they were just saying, oh, man, you know, we need to find somebody for this. And I was like, hey, I could do that. And they were like, (laughs) can you? And I was like, not really, but I will do it. And if I don't know how to do something... I'll figure it out and I'll tell you. And they were right. like, okay. Fast forward two years later from that opportunity, I'm sitting in meetings with managers, directing managers and operators from Google. And they're asking me questions about creating content for an experiential thing happening at Google. And it was like a very out of body experience to just get the opportunity to start to be in those conversations. Yeah. Now I'm building funnels, I'm building membership sites and I'm realizing that this time that I invested has really turned into something. And again, everybody's still looking at me like, I thought he was the fitness guy. And I'm like, well, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, you're six, eight. Is that correct? Yeah, six eight. I run about uh, two forty, depending on how many pieces of uh, or how many vegan uh, smoothies I have. <laughs> so like you're like you ain't no joke. You step into a room and you command a lot of respect, a lot of attention. I mean, when I first saw you, we kind of sat next to each other on this, on the panel. I'm like, 
I'm 5'6", 170, 169. You're 240, 6 <laughs> Like, it looked yeah. like, look. <laughs> and now the beard is back. Because before, I didn't have yeah. the beard. You know what I mean? So it was like a little toned down. But now right, it's just, it was. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because, like, I recognize that. You know, growing up, you know, I was always, you know, always so big. And, you know, it's just trying to break out of that space to where people will take me seriously. I had to do a lot of things. And one was the presentation, you know, making sure that I came with my shit correct. You know, when yeah. we were on that that panel, it was like I was the only one that I probably had the smallest podcast following, but everybody else that was there was like signing off like, oh, yeah, like that's, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so invest in that energy. And then also something else is, bro, I don't actually, I'll keep it real with you guys. I don't actually wear glasses. Oh. So I just play the game because I know that it breaks a barrier. I guess I should take these off now, but nah, nah. You look, just, now you look like Will Smith. Yeah, yeah. You know, it just <laughs> honestly, it just it just breaks the barrier. You know what I mean? And it, you know, being so big and not normal size, and people look at you and they think, oh, instantly he's a basketball player and and probably a jock. I want to bring myself down to a level where they just are looking at me for what they think they might see, which is yeah, you know what I mean, and yeah. give me a chance to you know be the best. I don't know, just con- contribute to whatever the project is. It's funny how people see you and they, you know, it's a natural animalistic thing to want to judge oh. someone to protect yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, is that dog going to attack me or like, can I pet it? You know, so it's just playing the game, you know? That Yeah, that's 100% true. Um, perception, both offline and online are huge. And uh, it's funny, sometimes you'll judge a person by their Instagram or whatever, or their podcast, and like you, you only get a one layer of you get one layer of them. But I think it's really important that layer looks good because that's on their only taste of you, only shot of you. So I like I've seen your stuff like online, like your stuff looks really good. Um, the Instagram, it. like everything, like everything is clean. Everything really portrays what you're trying to do as a, and it makes sense as to why your gym grew so fast. Now you mentioned in there guerrilla marketing tactics. Um, I'm a huge fan of guerrilla marketing. Some of my biggest mentors studied under like Jay Con Jay Conrad Levinson, mm-hmm. um, and uh, the father of guerrilla marketing. And uh, it's it's really cool to see how that it can be implemented implemented on a podcast online everywhere. Mm-hmm. So for you, what were some of the things that you learned from your gym business or any past experiences in the army, playing overseas that yeah. you were able to take and apply to your podcast? Because I know you've been very successful. I'm a huge fan of the name Vegan Transition because I have vegan clients and like the biggest thing they either get the people who are been vegans or people who are trying to figure out be, being vegan. Right. I can tell you right now, like the market is the people trying to figure out being vegan. That's the market. That's, <laughs> That's the hungry market. Those are the only people I care about. Like the rest of you guys yeah. are already vegan. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm interested. I just wanted to, to kind of ask you, what were some of the things you learned or, or used from your past experiences to grow your podcast? Yeah. I would say first is you don't have to know everything. Mm. Just go find the people that, you know, like um, when you go and you listen to the first episode of the vegan transition, you might be like, oh, like this sound, there's like one part where the audio kind of spikes. But when you listen to it, it's like, oh, this sounds pretty clean. What you don't know is literally I edited that myself. (laughs) I have never, ever ever mess around with any type of audio editing or use the garage band until two hours before I did that. And I watched like a few videos. I found the one that I thought was the best one. Yeah. I like, I like took my time. I like wasn't frustrated and didn't expect myself to get it right. Actually, bro, when you listen to it, I recorded that on my MacBook with no mic. I was like leaning over <laughs> talking to my MacBook. And so like, that's the first thing, like going out and find, just go, there's someone that is doing it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Especially today, like you can just, you can touch everyone and you, you can literally ask them questions. Like if I wanted to get a hold of you and like I'll DM people sometimes, they don't respond. So, you know, I'll like go in their DM, record a video, go on two of their posts, comment, go on their YouTube, comment on there. And then finally you get their attention, right? Like if you really want it, like someone will, will do it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, someone will recognize it, excuse me. So like finding those people, the other thing was, understand like I would write out probably all the channels that you have right now. So like your Facebook, okay. You have your YouTube. Okay. You have your Instagram. Okay. You have your Twitter. And then you have, you know, let's just say like your Snapchat. Right. Right. And then if there was another one, it would be like your uh, mailing list. Right. Yeah. So 
let's say you have all of those and then there are people around you. So like maybe list out 10 people that you had, like, Hey, like, would you, you know, on their Facebook page, you know, Hey, they have a big following, like, okay, this person has a big mailing list. Okay. This person owes me a favor. Okay. This person might want to, you know, and then obviously put some people on there that like are top notch that you probably wouldn't be able to, they probably wouldn't do anything for you, but you never know if you serve yeah. them, they might. And then you make a piece of content and then share it. So like I make a post, I share it on Instagram, right? I share it on my story. Okay. And then also I go on Snapchat. I talk a little bit about what that post is. I put the post and I put a swipe up to it. You know what I mean? When I record a live, when I record a podcast, right? I record it like this and I actually record on my, on my phone sometimes. And I I don't like to, because I try to record, (laughs) I try to record on my MacBook for Facebook, but my camera is like, just grimy. It's old. Like my MacBook's kind of old. You know what I mean? So the quality is better on my phone, but check this out. I would record on Instagram live on my phone while simultaneously recording Facebook live on my MacBook. And then I'm recording the audio for the podcast. And then I'm sharing that on Twitter, right? I'm sharing the swipe up to that to where you can actually watch the live on Facebook. And then I'm mailing that out to my mailing list and then I'm sending it to a couple pages that I'm cool with. And I'm like, Hey, like, you know, yada, yada. And then I, I actually, this is one right here that a lot of people could do, bro. So I got in with a really cool, um, plant-based now this is in my, in my sector, right? Right. A really cool, um, nonprofit called plantbaseddiet.org. And the reason I wanted to is because they've got like seven private groups with like tens of thousands of members. Finally, right? someone hacked the, the nonprofit right. game. Not hacked, yeah. but like I talk and, about this in my book. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And <laughs> they have like five different pages for vegan events. Yeah. Right? Oh, now, dude. now they wanted me to be on their board. I was just perfect. I already had served them for like, I'd done multiple events. Like I went out of my way. They didn't pay me. And I know they were fucking paying other people. Right. Yeah. I <laughs> went out of my shit. way. Like, I showed up, drive three hours, fucking take my shit, go back home. I speak. I crush that shit. Right. Okay. Uh, so now I've earned their respect. They're like, Hey, listen, we'd love to have you on board. I'm like, Hey, I'm going to need access to those fate to all the, all those Facebook. Yeah. Groups. <laughs> They're like, fucking was, done deal done. So now oh, check me out. I, love it. I record that live on my Facebook page. What do you think I do? I share that shit to five pages. I share it to seven groups. Yeah. Now I don't personally have to do it now because I have a virtual assistant. But right. which, by the way, that's another one. You don't need to do this shit yourself. Find a quality virtual assistant. Now, now, now check me out. She started out getting paid, you know, two dollars an hour for her. It's actually pretty good, though. You know, if you don't have experience with virtual assistants, my virtual assistant is from the Philippines and I've dealt with a lot from the Philippines. So for them, around five hundred dollars a month is like really actually really good money for them. Right. Yeah. So they're not just working for you. They're working for a few people. So for me, she worked up to making about like 80 bucks a week. So, and I brought her like seven clients. So she was killing the game. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? she's, she's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now for me, I'll, just a quick piece on that. Like when it comes to that, I'm not like I'm trying to think of the word. I really don't know how much, how many hours she works. I'm going to be honest. Right. All I know is that when we had 20 hours a week, she got all this stuff done and I needed her to do more. And then I kept adding, kept adding. She got up to 40 hours a week. And I told her, as long as this shit gets done, I don't care. And you know what I'm right. saying? So, and so yeah, now she those. respects me. She loves yeah. working for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, exactly. So using a virtual assistant is another way in creating the SOPs to where, all right, I record this. How can I repurpose it? Something else you'll see, bro, is I'll record the live, yeah. right? Save it. And then when you go on my Instagram, you see the, the graphic with the, um, like the words. Okay. That's a live that I did. And I just put it on Instagram TV and I use it as a post. You I know what like, I mean? Look at it. I'm looking at your, your stuff right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> Um, oh, dude. And then, so like, if I record something in one of my groups, yeah, they got that shit like exclusively. Yeah. But I can use the audio or use the video somewhere else. So if you mm-hmm. find a good flow of like mm-hmm. content, like, bro, you have so much content. Like, even in this conversation, you know what I'm saying? Like, if we yes. got, if we came up with the standard operating procedure for our team to, hey, give me five pieces of audio content just to use for Instagram posts. Oh, yeah. And, the last thing I would say probably is um, templating things out. Yes. So if you look at my page, I've got about four different styles of like graphic posts. There's one post. Yeah. On Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. And then your Instagram handle is the watch, the watch guy. guy. Yeah. W double T. Yep. Yeah. So there's one that has like, it's like a high res photo and it has a white graphic on it. Right. 
has a little white like caption page. I, yeah, I see the white. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I love that. Um, yeah. Like, the it's like a Facebook so, post. Yeah. So that's a template. So I literally just go in and I change the photo in Canva and I change the words in Canva and I just, bam, just like that. And then there's another style. That's the Twitter post. It's an image and it has a Twitter like screenshot on there. And like, that's the same thing. These see, these are pre-made. I'm not actually remaking these. I'm just changing the photo and changing the tweet. And I have a folder that's high res photos in my phone. I have a folder that's um, tweets that I thought were good. And then Boom. I just, just like that. Yeah. And then, so now it's simple. The tweets or are these like, you're just your tweets. Yeah. So like I make sure personally, I tweet stuff that can be multi-purpose to be used on other platforms later. Got it. So Twitter's not, I'll say like Twitter's kind of old, but I, I've seen people on Instagram use it as like a caption kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. So yeah. So it's a photo and then it has like a picture of like a JPEG of um, like a, a screenshot of the yeah. actual. So, and then you just got to find ways to reuse your content. And next thing you know, again, if you do some of those other things, like trying to reach out to these people, the dream 100 is probably another one. You know, I'm sure you're, you're big on that, but mm -hmm. just literally make a list. I have a, um, I have a spreadsheet of this. If you want, just remind me and I'll, I'll send you the link and people can just, it's already made. It's in Google spreadsheets. Cool. And basically yeah. I have a dream 100 for email. Like, so you, you gotta go like who has these badass email lists. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you get one for email, for like different yeah, verticals, email, Instagram, Twitter, Yo. Facebook, like everything <laughs> that you can think of. That's um, a, yeah. 500. Go ahead. Exactly. The yeah. 500. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so what I start with is, I tell people start with just like four categories. Yeah. 25 in each of those. Okay. I was going to say, you know bro, saying? like that's yeah, a lot start of like 20, people. 25 in each. And then yeah. now you have a hundred, right? And yeah. just grow it, just grow it from there. And then you're making a list of these people to start interacting with. Make sure you go follow their podcast. Make sure that you leave them ratings on their podcast. I need to go leave you a right. reminder. Um, I will follow like, like people like you. <laughs> I'll follow your podcast on on Spotify and I'll go follow your podcast on, on iTunes and make sure I leave ratings for each and then like screenshot it and tell them, Oh, Hey, I love your show. Just want to let you know I left a rating, you know, yada. And then you just start showing up on their radar. Yeah. If you want to know somebody, like we talked about somebody that really did it right. It was Daxi because yeah. Daxi spent about four fucking years, three years putting in the work and then it paid off. And I'm not going to say what he's doing right now because I don't know if it can be out, but yeah. He's doing some massive podcasting stuff for a very, <laughs> a brand we all love. You know, yeah. I think, you know, cause I think we talked about it, but, um, I gotta, I can't, I'm trying to remember what you were telling me about what, what you yeah, talked yeah, about, yeah. It, but I, I forget yeah. what the um, company or what it was, but, but it's just, you know, he pretty much boom, worked off the dream 100 and he loves the dream 100. And then he started reaching out to people and putting in the fucking work. Yeah. And if you systemize it where you're like, um, like Thursdays are, um, content creation days or Wednesdays are content creation days for me. Right. So that's where like either I'm making those posts that we were talking about yep. or I've got my assistant doing it. And then, you know, there's another day that's like, all right, maybe this is dream 100 day, or maybe this is video day where I'm going to record, you know, a bunch of videos that I'm going to use on Facebook and primarily, and then how can I multipurpose it? You know, got it. And, oh, Hey, this is my recording day for vegan transition. Okay. This is my recording day for success bias. And what am I going to do? I'm going to record three pieces. You know what I'm saying? And my yeah. interviews are kind of spread out, but mm -hmm. I'm going to personally record, you know, three pieces that will range anywhere from, you know, 10 to, you know, 30 minutes on my own. And then it's batched and it's systemized. So you wake up and you're like, all right, today's my day to just go reach out to influencers on Instagram or Facebook and just try to get people on my show and build those connections. And today's a day when I'm going to plan out my content so I can, you know, set up my repurposing and yeah, bro, after a while, it just, it's a monster, you know? Yeah. It's, it's clockwork. Um, I think for me, the biggest thing, one of the questions I had when I was starting off early on was like, do I focus on one platform? Or do I focus on a lot of platforms? Mm -hmm. Should I do things for all the platforms or should I just like, right. no, like everything else is a, is a zero, but like, you're going to go 10 X on the podcast. Are you going to go 10 X on Instagram? Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen people do it both ways. I'm yeah. a huge fan of focus and then having a team to leverage to do the other stuff that I don't like to do so I can double down on the podcast. That's but, the um, biggest thing I would say right there. That, see, see, you are personally here. Your attention yeah. is here. Yeah. But you created the ability to have the other things happening. And I think, yeah. I think that's like if there were like a place of like, you know, like content creation was over here and like 
you know, multiple platforms over here and like your main focus is here. It's that point of intersection right there. Mm -hmm. And that's probably having the SOPs to help you do those other things, even though your attention is in one place primarily, because yeah, I know from like, personally for me, it was like so much of my time was invested on Instagram. Yeah. And I, I believe the same thing is like, you can't be everywhere. Right. Yeah. Um, we talked a little bit about that earlier. Right. Mm. But at the same time, I need to understand how the game is played because that's all it is, right? How the game is played on these other platforms. So 100%, yeah, you got to Snapchat. Understand. Like I don't yeah. like my Snapchat is like horrible, bro. I only get like 70 views or something on my snaps compared to like Instagram where it's like, what? <laughs> it's an insane amount. You know what it's I mean? Different. Yeah. different um, beats. And that's because I was dormant for so long. Same thing with mm-hmm. Facebook. I was dormant for so long. So it's like, I'm behind the game on that. And now Facebook right. doesn't do me any favors because they're like, motherfucker, you haven't done anything yeah. on here. So yeah. Where you been? <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. I, yeah, it's somewhere in between. And then, you know, a really big turning point for me, bro, was, um, or just not a turning point, but it's just a very big point of realization at the end of 2018, I went through YouTube. Now the easiest way to do this is on Apple TV. Um, okay. but I basically wrote down some people whose channels I really watch. So Casey Neistat and, and, and who I would, there's something about them that I'm trying to replicate. Yeah. Casey Neistat, Gary V, Eric Thomas. So the hip hop preacher, Lewis Howes, Joe Rogan, yeah. the Joe Rogan experience. And it was like one or, Oh, like men's health and like one more. Right. So I literally sat and counted every fucking video that they put out for the last year. I wrote down how many different playlists they have. I wrote out the total number of videos that they put out. I just took notes on there, right? Mm-hmm. And then I found the average amount of content that they were putting out, basically the total, and then per week, okay? How many was that, just out of curiosity? Joe Rogan put out like a little over like nine pieces of content a week on YouTube. Damn. Gary Vee was like eight, which was like surprising. I thought he was going to be way more. But another reason I did this was because I was looking at this stuff to see if I recognized it. Mm. And I, most of it, I did. It's all same repurposed stuff, right? That's what we do. Some of our clients, yeah. Some of our clients, like they, they take a whole interview like this. We'll chop up one part where we were talking about which social media platform should we focus on, put that on YouTube. And that's, yeah, that's really where it's going now. The, The question is everyone looking around, like, I don't have a team. (laughs) <laughs> yeah 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 i'm telling you um it's, it's, it's on, like you're saying online jobs.ph is where i found my virtual assistant online and, um, jobs.ph That's, yeah okay. yeah and honestly if anybody needs help like just hit me up you know what i'm What's saying the best and, way to get you up? uh uprise digital marcus at uprise digital.com and uprise is spelled a little different right yeah yeah u-p-r-y-z u-p-r-y-z and i mean I'm actually, my assistant, we had been setting up some systems to see because people had been asking me about yeah. helping people to, to maneuver this. But yeah, man, like you go through a couple growing pains. I ran some interviews. I gave some tasks. And once I saw how it worked and then with the right assistant, like we grew my Pinterest. I hired a girl for Pinterest purely. We grew my Pinterest to like over 170,000 viewers monthly. I was like, what? Holy crap. Bro, what kind of how did you, have you leveraged that on your podcast? Cause I heard some f- interesting stories about that. And, uh, I haven't I, yet, but what I was experimenting with was taking the Instagram post, repurposing an Instagram post on Pinterest yeah, and linking the Pinterest back to your website or mm. back to your podcast. So every podcast topic, I am going to have something about that on Pinterest because people are looking in that category. Um, can you comment on Pinterest? Can you like, fuck uh, yeah, bro. Comment, so, like Q and A, dude. Like I would do Q and A. Like post your biggest question about X here, and mm-hmm. then yeah, and then just yeah. scrape. You kind of like you do other other areas, but I think Pinterest would yeah. be interesting. Different demographic. Yeah. Now I would suggest like if Pinterest is like a hidden gem, so like <laughs> it might take you a while to learn it. So hire. Like I said, I just went and I was like, hey, listen, and bro, I didn't I didn't hire her to be honest. My assistant is like my right hand. I said, hey, listen, guy in. You need to find somebody that knows how to do Pinterest. This is what we're looking to do. This is what we, this is how we want to maximize it. Yeah. She goes and gets four candidates. She's like, Hey, listen, these are the four people that I think, I think that this girl is probably going to be the best. I was like, bet. She set up the meetings. She sent me the links. I get on the calls. 
she's like listening in on them. And then she's like, next calls this time. And then she's like, Hey, I think still think that this girl is the best. And this is why. And I was like, run it, let's go. And she was a gem. She was an absolute gem, but she understood the game. She's yeah. like finding tribes. They're called tribes. Like she's finding like tribes <laughs> on, on Just Pinterest. Yeah, yeah. And joining them and like getting other people to reshare our pins. And yeah. I actually have the SOPs for Pinterest, the SOPs that we used. We've gotten a document somewhere. So if you want, write that down, bro. And um, I'll share that as well. I'll get my assistant to put it into a, a PDF or something. But um, yeah, bro, that grew us to like over like 170,000 monthly. Damn. It was, it was crazy. How do you drive? What are you doing with the traffic? Are you driving it back to the podcast? Back to the Yeah. Instagram? So that's what I'm about to experiment with driving it back to the podcast. So like I said, taking cool. every podcast and having a template and then mm-hmm. making like a cover specifically for Pinterest. Mm-hmm. So what I would do is in Canva, I would make, because you can make like specific, you know, Pinterest ones. Yeah. I would make like three templates that would be used for Pinterest and like each month. I mean, you could even make a few more, but, and then like, you know, each podcast episode, put it in one of those templates and then share it. And then just boom, directing all the traffic back to the podcast. Or if you're selling something that's even better because you can push them back to an article and then, you know, that's got hyperlinks or you can just push them directly to a sales page. So most people are think Pinterest is being used for like e-commerce mostly. And, um, a lot of people that are running blogs with like recipes and stuff. So yeah, you very can, true. Like, Your stuff looks good on Instagram. Like the food you put on there. Like I was looking at the peanut butter and jelly post. I was like, bro, <laughs> um, <laughs> one question. Here's one. And one tip I would, I would give to you on the, on the Pinterest stuff. I would sweeten the pot and make it a contest and have the picture yeah, like that. of an Instagram. Go listen to my podcast, leave a review, come back here on Pinterest and, and say, I did it. And I'll give you a prize or you'll win like that. X or you can go to kingsumo.com and say, Hey, I'm doing a podcast contest for my Pinterest followers only. So go to my podcast, subscribe, and then go to this link. Yeah. Enter your name for a prize. See, you're really good at that. I was listening. I was like, I said, today I was catching up on one and I was like, I like the one that you did where you were saying, um, uh, like leave tips for someone to start a podcast. And then that you were going to mention those tips in the show. I was like, that's super cool. Oh. <laughs> Cause it made, I was like, you. because I've been, my brain kind of stops, you know, your brain kind of stops working after a while. Like you need some new creative ideas. You do. Yeah. I'm always, and, uh, looking at, I'm not. Yeah. I, was trying I just look at people. <laughs> yeah, so I'm glad, I'm glad that helped. Um, a couple of things we talked about off the line, like, cause like obviously I'm diving into this and you're like, you've got so many guerrilla marketing strategies. Like, I might call this the king of guerrilla marketing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in the two in 2019 and beyond, like You're the man. market, you might be the king of guerrilla marketing, dude. Uh, so Spotify playlist, you just let me know about what Eric Preacher, Eric Hip Hop Preacher is doing. So yeah. tell me a little bit about this, dude. Like this is interesting. Yeah. So I think the biggest thing, like we're talking about, is not necessarily making. You know, once you plan out your content for say 90 days. Um, mm-hmm. Like uh, again, maybe you're only going to, maybe you're only going to post like everybody's like, you know, Gary V says you should be what, like a hundred posts, like a seen a hundred times, like a day oh, much, like, between all poor, like it's virtually for most people, they can't fathom that. Right. <laughs> and most of that is repurposing anyways. Right. Yeah, but yeah. let's say you only posted, you know, like three times a week. Okay. And you did videos. Okay. You just did videos and you posted three times a week of you talking yeah. about whatever your craft is. You could then take that audio, right? And you could make it into a podcast, Mm -hmm. but you could also make those into actual albums on Spotify. So you could go in for a topic and let's just say you go in for a topic and I don't know, you're a motivational speaker. So one of the things you're going to talk about is like overcoming like obstacles. You could make an entire album on overcoming obstacles and people that are like driving to work or people that are like getting ready for meetings or people that are just, they can just listen to, they can stream, you know what I mean? It's just another way for them to enter. Cause if they listen to that album, they yeah. might also go listen to your playlist, right? Your like workout playlist. And then they might want to go consume you on Facebook or Instagram or wherever. But Eric Thomas pretty much took entire books. Like he has books on there. Smart. And there, it's like each chapter is a track. It's like 30 minutes. I was like, this guy's literally just, he's just using like the game exactly to the advantage that it's supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, 
I thought it was fans. Some of them are like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. And that's where I got the idea from. Um, but again, what, like we're talking about is what am I doing, bro? I'm going and I'm looking at these people who are doing the things that I want to do, have the reach right. that I have. Right. But they didn't just start out with that shit. You know what I mean? So, you know, exactly. that's, that's, yeah. that's another thing that you can do right there. And for you, so you were saying like, so he put all of his books. So for a podcast, can you put podcasts on these, on these playlists or like, how would that yeah, work? I, I don't think so because I think I'm guessing this is all hypothetical, but right. I'm guessing Spotify is going to be like, nah, like <laughs> right. try again, you know, <laughs> they need to tighten um, up with that. They need to actually let us do that. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I mean, it's still all the same. A stream is a stream. And if you've got like, like we were talking about the example before is I've got, you know, I'm in some, um, some groups with, you know, some influencers on Instagram and I think yeah. it's the dumbest word ever, but whatever. Um, you know, some people with some really big accounts and you're talking 500,000 like followers. Mm. Imagine if you had those 500,000 followers and let's just say maybe really only like 80,000 of them are like faithful, like engaged, right? Right. 60, right. Let's even just say 50,000, like the rest of yeah. them are just whatever. Yeah. But if you had those people coming over to Spotify and regularly streaming, not a playlist that you make, but an actual album that you've made. And you can put your own music on there. You, there there's a way to put music like, yeah, or yeah. Con, like maybe an audible book. Like I have an audible book. Could I like, that's what I mean, it, ex, that's exactly, that's exactly what you could do. So especially something that you're, you know, where like with your book, like you were talking about how, you know, people in the U S can get it, but other people, they can get the, you know, the audible book. And yeah. it's like, I'm giving this away. Like I, I might as well just make it in another way that people want to, you know, digest it. Maybe you only want to listen. Listen, some people I send the link to my, like the first link I send is to Spotify. And I should probably change that. But the first thing I send to people for my podcast is Spotify. And some people like, ah, I do Apple music, you know what I mean? Or I do yeah. iTunes. Yeah. And then some people are like, oh, I listen to my stuff on SoundCloud. I listen. Okay. That's cool. But so just put it on all those, all those yeah. places. You know what I mean? You can just put it where people will digest it. But just with Spotify getting so big and coming up the way that it has, it's like, it's just another way. Again, and you, that's an investment in yourself, you yeah. know, because I mean, it's a super, super small amount that you get paid like per stream, but you do get paid for streams. <laughs> that, that, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's better than fucking charging. You're getting charged for streams. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, we should do some more exploration into that. But I think yeah, it's a really – people are already doing it. Yeah. The whole – the cool thing is like I'm trying to figure out if they will flag you. Let's just say I take my podcast and say it's music or put it in the music section. I have no idea how I would do that. But if someone wanted to say maybe record a series because I see this as being like – That's what I think right First there. 30 days of a vegan – of your vegan transformation series. Day one, mm -hmm. day two, day four. It's an audible series. You can go – if you're trying to go exactly. vegan, boom. I think that if you probably did it as like – underneath like for instance like underneath podcast domination or underneath vegan transition i think they're gonna be like what are you doing you know what i mean they'll probably <laughs> flag you but if not and it's just like you know it's just underneath your brand and i mean eric thomas is doing it so <laughs> yeah yeah i'm trying to i'm, I'm gonna yeah, dive into that's, this that's what i planned on though exactly what you were saying like all right let me just put together a series of like you know what i'm saying hey so you know here's my audible book in fucking you know what I'm saying? Like album format, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do that. So like my, our company, we do audible books on a very small limited basis. We've done a couple now. I did mine through my guys. And one of the things we, well, my guy was telling me, he's like, yo, do you want this like a whole thing? Or do you want this in chapters? I was like, no, no, no. Like make it a whole thing. I don't want to have to open a new file every time I listen to a chapter, but that might make sense now as to where we could take the chapters and put them on there. Yeah. And anyone else listening to this, like you can do the same um, Marcus, you had a good idea with the music before. If you're a motivational speaker or if your stuff is more motivational, inspirational, you could also do that. Like you could also go that route, right? Where you're having, you put yep. music underneath it and you have, and it's just people like starting to absorb your brand. Mm -hmm. Like this is how you get found out. And this, this leads is. to the long tail of getting a sale, making money, building influence. You know, All right, let me, let me give you an example, bro. I <laughs> pulled it up. <laughs> so Eric Thomas does a segment on his content. And I know this is on YouTube called thank God it's Monday. Yes. He's 16 seasons into this. I don't think it's years. I think it's just like weeks. They're like 17, 16 weeks long. Right. <laughs> so these tracks are four minutes, three minutes, six minutes, three minutes, bro. 
and these are albums. Thank God it's Monday, season 16, 15, 14. Okay, okay we got to talk about this. We got to talk about this. So have you ever seen, have you seen freaking Russell Brunson, how he has his podcast splintered off into seasons and they're all individual podcasts? Yeah. So why do you think he does that? I don't know. Like more traffic. Yeah, like, think yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. Like, instead yeah. of having your name on one album, now you got your fucking name on like yeah, one, yeah, two. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. about to do podcast domination season one. Yeah. Like, you could do yeah. v- vegan, trans- vegan yeah. transformation. I actually had one. said that I, that I wanted to do yeah. seasons originally, but the reason I didn't was because <laughs> I wasn't able to dial in on like, I'm like, yo, season one, what's it going to be? Like, I'm still going to talk about, I have so many random shit like in my Who notes. Who cares? I was like, put it yeah, in season yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I should. random season. But like, I'm thinking in iTunes, you make it into a separate podcast. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you take all That's of them. A, yeah. Boom. We might do that with some client. That'd be interesting. So, so here's one more that he has. This was in 2016. Average skill, phenomenal will, the audible, the audio book. So not <laughs> audible, the audio. And it's literally chapter one, chapter, it's 10 <laughs> chapters. The longest ones are 13, 11, and 18 minutes. Oh my God. This and is- Eric Thomas is massive now. So the amount of streams he's getting, let's just check. Yo, this turned into like a science experiment. But yeah, this, this whole it, this whole episode turned into a, tra- a science oh, experiment. Out. He's got okay, here we go. By the numbers, Eric Thomas has 110,559 monthly listeners. His top five episodes on Spotify. 2.8 million, 1.6 million, 1.1 million, 623,000, 1 point or 1 million listens, streams. Your boy has got over 10,000 streams easy, probably between everything that he's got. Now, I don't know how much you get paid per stream. I should know. I, I will find the answer to that. Yeah. But I'm, this I'm is another long tail. Bro, like, your clients see like, oh yeah, I can put you on Spotify and I can do this. It's just and that's something nobody's doing. If everybody right. that is running something for clients right now, no matter if your client speaks and you don't do this, you're a fucking <laughs> asshole. We just told you what to do. I got so many notes, dude. It's not even crazy. It's like we had to charge for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> for real, we're gonna this episode. You guys are gonna see this episode on Spotify, all right? As an audio <laughs> uh, marketing. I'm gonna coin this term now and put my flag in the ground, and I'm gonna claim the word. Audible autoresponders. So what we're talking about here is basically how do you make an autoresponder out of a freaking playlist? Mm-hmm. So take Spotify, take SoundCloud. If you know, cause like, you know, SoundCloud has like a limited space for free. Mm-hmm. They have like, there's like a limited amount of space you can put before they charge you. Right. What you can do is take your best stuff as a series and make it into a series that leads them to another platform. Yeah. So it's like, here's a five part series. Then, Oh, by the way, this is it. But go here to get my, to get the rest, you know, you can That's do the same. Yeah. You can do this. Cause yeah. like, it's free, it's free for a certain bit, but you don't want to pay for that crap. Cause it's not a good company. Yeah. I'm not trying to pay for it. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I think that's um, another strategy we're going to explore SoundCloud using it to extend people. Cause I look at the stats the other day compared to um, iTunes. There's actually more people now, or there's a higher percentage of people, I should say going to Spotify, SoundCloud and where was it? Where else was it? Friggin pandora i think bro it breaks my heart but i don't know about you i have issues with apple i have issues with itunes excuse me i will set my settings to where bro i unfollowed so many podcasts on my phone and i (laughs) are on itunes and i only subscribe on itunes to the people's podcasts people that i know yeah it's like my freaking go-to even uh, uh, no no let me take a step back the only podcast i'm subscribed to on itunes are people i know Straight up. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> and, it, and, and, and this is the reason I would set it to like only to my phone. I'm not joking. 10 times to only yep. download, like only download the most recent episode. It doesn't and listen. I, no, it doesn't. It, it doesn't listen. You said it. And I'm like, fuck you guys. I'm out of here. Like yeah. I just completely stopped. And I only, and because of that, I only follow the people that I'm friends with because it just blows up my like data and not my data, but it just takes up so much space. Oh, yeah. So now I just, and Spotify doesn't do that. Yeah, it wastes so much, so much space. Even on my computer, for instance, like exactly on my computer. I'm like, I didn't ask to download these episodes. What's going on here? Uh, and yes. I see in my back end, I'm like, I got all these freaking pod- random podcast episodes. I'm like, this is an MP3 file. It's taking up space. So yeah, it's um, they're doing away with iTunes. They're splitting it up. I think like iTunes is gonna be like it's gonna be like Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and then Apple yeah. TV. From what I've seen and heard, 
Um, my favorite show to get to find good information is the feed. Like the feed is they do their stuff. Like it's like yeah. my news flash for yeah. all things. I Apple podcasts and yeah. podcasting. So are, are you coming to, um, the, uh, podcast movement? When you told me about that, I got to go. When is it again? August 12th, 13th. I'm going to be there the 12th, the 13th and the 14th. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I think, I'm, I think I'm good for that. I think I'm good yeah. for that. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was going to be in September for a second and we just got like some crazy tech news with my company and uh, I'm definitely not going to be here in September. So, oh, Hey, if it's for good news there, that's, yeah, that's yeah. good. That's what's up. Um, all right. We're still on the, on the, on the ball here with yeah. uh, we kind of got off on a tangent on the Spotify and the audible stuff, but I think that was really important. Cause that's like a, that's an, that's a blue ocean. Like that's a freaking blue ocean. Nobody's talking. Oh yeah. I mean, before you heard you and I actually talk about it, like, nobody i've have never heard anyone talk about it like we mm. should do a webinar or something if you want to make a live document let's do it <laughs> webinar coming soon folks yeah <laughs> um okay all right we're, we're definitely going to do that um before before i let you go here marcus what question have i not asked you that i should ask ask you oh man or something you'd feel remiss to uh to leave off of this episode <sighs> yeah man I would say that it's a couple things. Um, the first is it's a quote that just sticks with me like crazy. And um, I heard it from, you know, from Ty Lopez in one of his programs, the 67 steps, like which changed my life. You can think what you want about Ty Lopez. I'm not like, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like an ambassador or anything, but right. um, the 67 steps program changed my life. Yeah. Um, that was a big one for me too. Yeah, I yeah. didn't finish it all, but like, it was like the, it was like the, the, the stepping stone. Yeah. Daxi you know? said the same thing. And, uh, he says uh, to seek out a multitude of mentors. And it actually wasn't his quote. It was, it was someone else's. And I was like, damn, like that, mm. the power of that, of constantly, you know, not putting your energy in just one place, but you know, who do you know in real estate? Who do you know in tech? Like, who do you know that's a good husband? Who, you know, that's a good father. Like, who do you, you know what I mean? Just, yeah. just, you know, who do you know that is the, you know, the marketing person, like who, you know, seek these people out and and don't be afraid to say, you know, I had a kid reach out to me and ask me, Hey, you know what I mentor him. And I started asking him questions. I'm like, why, why should I mentor you? Like, why? Like, yeah. why do you want to mentor? And he was like, Oh, well, that's a good question. I was like, what do you want to accomplish? You know? And it's like, go give people. And I'm not saying that that kid didn't, but go give people value. Like, Hey, listen, like, I know that your time is valuable, but yeah. I will not waste it. You know, what do I need to do to show my, you know, and just don't be afraid to go out and find, you know, listen, the biggest mistake I made, I think was trying to figure it out all alone on my, on my own, because, you know, you're in school and, you know, I was in business school at FGCU and it's like, you got to learn all this shit. And I'm like, man, I'm never going to, I don't ever want to do any of this. <laughs> Why? I don't like it, but they make yeah. you feel like you have to know how to do everything. You don't, you yeah. need to find mentors that have done it. They will give you the blueprint. Literally, they literally want to give it to you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Um, that's the funniest thing about it. I was, a, I was an entrepreneurship dropout. Like I literally dropped out of the entrepreneurship track for my minor. Yeah. I was just like, fuck this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then if there was one more thing I would say is don't look for the path of, of least resistance, but at the same time, be a quick learner. Mm. Look, you got to expect that shit is not going to go your way. People are not going to buy your shit. Um, no one is going to like your posts and share your stuff and just expect it. But if you continue to put in the work and you continue to learn and you continue to ask questions, you're going to grow from that. And in time, it's going to come as long as your energy is in the right place. And then, like I said, you know, learn, you know, from those quickly, you know, learn from those mistakes, you know, make adjustments, you know, continue to experiment. And you are a huge testament to that more than a lot of people but you got to invest in yourself. You can't just think that people are just going to give all of this away for free. You know, you invested in a course <laughs> that was a lot of money <laughs> and you were willing to bet on yourself after doing the right research on this program and thinking that it was for you. And it was when I started spending money on books, when I started spending money on coaching, when I started spending money on a team, yeah, things just started happening because I now had the tools to grow, but also it's very hard to ask somebody to pay a $3,300 invoice. If you've never paid a $3,300 invoice. Yeah, it is. It's, I, it's hard to ask that money. If you never put it, put your own skin in the game. That's very true. I mean, I'm sure there are people that have like done it, like got the sale, but like 
there's doubt. There's doubt inside of you and it's coming out in how you're speaking to when you say, yeah, you know, um, so that's uh, $3,000. I'm like, so that'll be $3,300, you know, $3,300 yeah, yeah, yeah. and 16 cents. <laughs> like, would you like to pay, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, when a Venmo that to me or. And, Are you going to take care of that? <laughs> yeah. You know, so um, yeah. yeah, man, if, those are probably the things that I would share. And yeah, so. I love it. I love it, dude. Um, one last time, where can people connect with you best and fastest? Awesome. So check it out. If you are on Instagram, my Instagram is the Watts guys, my personal page and my page for my digital stuff is Uprise Digital, um, U-P-R-Y-Z, Uprise Digital. And if you want to come over and see a bunch of the free stuff, like we're kind of talking about here today, um, Uprise Digital, that's U-P-R-Y-Z, digital.com backslash free. And I'm going to have a bunch of downloads. There'll be a four day course that you guys can come on in and watch on how I went from zero to like 15 um, K, like my first like 40 days of launching my systems online. There'll be a bunch of other free downloads. Like you can just take them. Like I don't even want your email, but uh, yeah. And on Facebook, um, the Watts guy, I post, that's where most of my fitness and stuff, fitness and nutrition stuff is. So yeah, just hit me up though. I love it. I love it, dude. Um, thanks again for coming on. We got to talk about thank some you, really bro. next level stuff today. And uh, I am truly grateful. So thank you. Love it, man. Thanks, bro. Hey, and don't forget, I have a number of free bonuses for you. That's Yes, these are free templates, guides, and stuff that I've actually included in my recent book, How to Get Your First 100,000 Downloads in 100 Days. But you don't even have to buy the book. I'm just going to give this to you for free. All you have to do is go to Lewis Ryan. Luis Ryan, L-U-I-S-R-Y-A-N dot com forward slash book. There is a simple form where you fill out your name and your email and you get a ton of free stuff, all the templates and guides that I included in the book, but you don't have to buy the book. So you're saving yourself a chunk of money um, that literally will take you probably less than two minutes to accomplish or perform. So enjoy that. That's my gift to you. Use it. Don't just let it fall by the wayside and I'll see you on the next episode.